Hi, this is Abdul Aziz Khan, and in this second lesson of uh, DevOps, we will be going forward from where we left in the last lesson. So, I hope most of you should have uh, installed this VS Code uh, because uh, VS Code will work as uh, the foundation for us. We will be doing most of the things on VS Code, uh, but just let me know that uh, what platform you are using. So, let's go further after installing uh, vs code we are supposed to be installing some kind of linux on the system so the main requirement is that we should have uh, linux available uh, to us because uh, uh, linux is used as a de facto platform for the people who work on servers and who take care of servers because there are a lot of utilities and a lot of things which are available uh, more in Unix than in any other platform. So this is one of the reason that we were basically wants to have uh, Unix available with us. If you have any system uh, which is default on Unix, like it, the operating system is uh, some kind of Unix or Linux based. Or uh, years ago was that you had two systems on your uh, machine. And when you power on your system, then in the initial startup, uh, the machine should ask you that you want to start in Windows or you want to start in some other operating system. But that is not very much common because most of the time we want both of the uh, flavors because normally we use Outlook for our office work or we use some other tools in Windows because Windows is quite simple and user friendly. So a lot of people, even like me, I want to use Windows for most of my other work but my work related to uh, development or related to cloud i want to use Un uh, linux or unix so the second option that uh, we had uh, we still have is uh, to install some kind of a uh, virtual machine on your uh, system like uh, there is uh, vmware or there is oracle virtual box maybe some of you have uh, used this Oracle virtual box. I will try to make one uh, lesson on this as well. So in this virtual box, you can have any kind of uh, um, image on it, and then you can load that image, and it will become a virtual machine within your computer. So in this way, also you will have a flavor of uh, two systems. You will have your like. If I open this, it it will it will open a Kali Linux uh, virtual machine here, and I have in Windows already, so I. I can use it just like an app so this will become an app for me if i want to work on kali linux i can just click here and when i want to go back to normal uh, windows then i can click here so this is another option to have a uh, linux on your system and the good thing is that you can have both operating system at the same time and they can even in interact with you can share files between uh, you can make share folders and you can share the files as well the third option which I will be using and I expect you people also to use it is to use uh, Linux in your uh, VS code and uh, it's very kind of very simple uh, in installation uh, maybe simple or maybe not it's uh, it, it's your luck as well I will say um, installation of uh, WSL uh, let me give you some idea of WSL first WSL is a Windows subsystem for Linux it was developed by Microsoft so that you can have a very smooth uh, flavor of both uh, Windows and Linux at the same time and it will be like uh, it will be like you are you are working in both of them at the same time uh, if you see my this my prompt, this prompt is basically a Unix prompt. This is not a, a Windows command prompt. Uh, if you read here, also, you can see this is bash. Bash is 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 a shell of uh, uh, Unix. So this terminal uh, is basically a Unix terminal. This is this is not a Windows terminal. So even here, if you read it, I hope it is not very small. But even if it is a small, you can understand it's written WSL and then Ubuntu. So this system is using a Windows subsystem for Linux and uh, I'm using Ubuntu on it. So let me guide you that how we can do it on your computer. So as I told you, it may be very easy and it may not be very easy. 
uh, you just have to write WSL to hyphen and then install. I will not uh, enter because I already have it. But when you just write WSL and hyphen hyphen and install, uh, if you are a lucky guy and everything goes as expected, then uh, the installation will start. Uh, it will take some time because uh, uh, the WSL is quite big. I mean, it's I think 7, 800 MB or maybe 1 GB. So it will take some time to download and then it will uh, install WSL on your system. Like for me, I can see the uh, version that it's telling me that Ubuntu is is running on my system and version is 2. So, but it it may become a big problem as well. I mean, it maybe you write WSL hyphen hyphen uh, install and then nothing happens and uh, then you you may have to as per the because you know uh, we we all may have different kind of systems so it's not easy for me to tell you plainly that do these steps one two three and you will get it no it's it's not like that you may have to do a lot of steps or you may have to do very less steps i in in this video i will just guide you to very small steps which is basically for my laptop uh, i have a hp spectre uh, the good thing of spectre is that if you want to go in the bios setup you can just uh, go it from here. Uh, if I ask it that uh, we start and I go to this system settings. Now in this system settings, if you see here, uh, there's a uh, advanced option and this advanced option has uh, in this recovery, if you read here, it's reset advanced startup. So and then if you click on this recovery, uh, then you have the again advanced startup. If I will click this one, the advanced startup, which you can see here, and I click restart now, it will uh, go in a restart mode. It will not directly restart. Uh, let me show you, I have made a kind of a small presentation that how it will work. Uh, if I had clicked on that button, that button should have bring me to this blue screen of death, a very famous screen. So this screen, I will have to click on this troubleshoot. So assuming that we are coming through that step that I go to this control panel and then I start this restart and go in the system settings and then I go to advanced settings and then I click restart. So after restarting, this will open this blue screen and I will have to click on troubleshoot. After troubleshoot, I will have to click on this advanced options. After advanced option, I will have to click on this UEFI firmware settings. So I will have to change the firmware settings and now this will actually restart my PC now it will ask me to restart at this point this will restart my whole system and after restarting you will reach this very known BIOS setup uh, this will be the startup menu of your system so if this is sometimes it is very cumbersome in some other uh, laptops that you have to restart and you have to press F10 or F4 or some other key or escape or something so in my system it's a kind of easy but the steps are uh, too many so when we reach this step 5 then i have to press f10 to go to bios setup now this will open the bios setup then i will be in the main then i will have to go to the system configuration uh, and the last uh, step is that in system configuration i have to enable this virtualization technology so if you try to install wsl and it asks you that your system is not supporting uh, virtualization then uh, one direct way is that that you go to the bios and you follow all these steps based on your laptop the steps may be very much different but they will be quite similar i mean you have to reach the bios and you have to enable the you you don't have to go directly uh, you can check it from your system uh, let me show you if you go to control alt delete and you go to task manager so we are in the task manager and you go to performance now in performance you can see here 
here it's showing that virtualization is enabled so you don't directly need to go to that place you can just control alt delete you can reach this place and you can verify now for example if your system is not st starting wsl and is giving you some error and you check that virtualization is enabled so it means one step is done so virtualization we can see that there is a check mark against virtualization but this is not the end you may have to do uh, something else as well there are some windows uh, features that you need to enable so if you write features here and uh, turn windows feature on and off uh, let me make it bigger so see here there is a windows subsystem for linux which is which has a checkbox and there is virtual machine platform has a checkbox and there is windows hypervisor platform has a checkbox so you have to uh, check at least these three things uh, windows subsystem windows hypervisor and virtual machine platform so this may be uh, one other uh, reason if your WSL is not installing. If you have gone through both of these things and still WSL is, is not installing on your system, it is still giving you some error, then you can make a snapshot and send it to me and I will let you know that uh, what kind of issue you may have or you can google it and you can try to find uh, what is behind that so assuming that uh, you have wsl installed on your system then when you will open uh, vs code and when you go in terminal uh, if it opens in a in a command prompt terminal then you can uh, simply write wsl and how to check that you are in Linux is that because we are used to uh, win, uh, Windows, like for example in Windows we write uh, DIR to get the directory but we don't write ls because if you write ls in microsoft windows you don't recognize ls but if you write ls on a linux platform it recognizes ls and it gives you the same um, response it lists the directory so this can confirm you that you are in uh, in windows there are naturally there are other ways but uh, this is the most common and simple way to know i mean i have shown you some other things as well that we are in ubuntu we, you can uh, try some other known uh, uh, unix commands so it will tell you that you are in a unix platform so i hope that uh, this uh, introduction to getting uh, Linux in your system should be smooth and fine for you. So please follow it. Uh, it is up to you. I mean, you want to use uh, it in VS Code or you want to use it as a separate standalone uh, Unix of some kind. It's uh, all up to you. But do let me know that if you have installed um, Linux in your system and everything is working fine. So you have uh, VS Code and you have uh, Linux of some kind with you so that we can uh, go in the next section. So see you in the uh, next video. Uh, goodbye.